All right. Welcome to Man Streaming, Episode 7, with Redbeard, Coffee with Comment, 40 Ounce, and the Piper Report as a special guest today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give the introductions over to the other people who are, are not hosting. Uh, we'll start with 40 Ounce, go coffee, and then I let Piper introduce himself. Howdy. I'm 40 Ounce. I do political things and... Uh... That's it. <laughs> and make memes funny. with MS Paint. And I make memes with MS Paint. Yeah, this is really true. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Coffee with Comment. Uh, I, my channel has become more of a variety channel, I have to say. But uh, mostly politics. Uh, I'm the Pipe Report. I also do politics. I actually made a second channel called the Piper Review, where I was going to do movie reviews and... I've only done one so far, though, on the Shawshank Redemption. I kind of slacked off <laughs> off of that one. <clears throat> you know, I've never seen that. Oh, it's it's really? it's one of the greatest movies out there. It's probably my favorite movie. It's great. Really? Yeah, you're missing out, dude. It's good stuff. All right. So, um, what topics are we starting off with? Forty. I'm getting to that, man. <laughs> you just keep drinking your Mountain Dew. <laughs> what he's chugging his Mountain Dew. He's like, man, I'm ready to go, man. He's going to go through. What's up with the, the whole US? Well, no, just, there was, <laughs> well, there was, there was like a long, awkward silence for a second on my end, and I was just like, uh, maybe well, yeah, I should say something. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. See, we, we have a minute because he's grabbing something. Uh, I know. I was, I'm not used to hosting, so I was waiting for coffee to be like, All right, guys. <laughs> like, coffee always does. Uh, if you uh, want me to do that, I can. It's just like if you're hosting it, you know, I'd let you run the show, man. No, no. Actually, I would prefer you do that. I that's what I'm used okay. to. All right. I don't like change. <laughs> well, you know, it, you know, you can blame the cucks on YouTube for this because uh, that video should have never gotten taken down. No. Yes. And I I for understand what? it was what pretty video? spicy. Uh, my uh, my response to YouTube's proud to be. Oh yeah. Was taken down at about ten thousand views after having received almost two hundred subs off of it. And yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> they, I guess, they couldn't have that. So, <laughs> right. So I have a community strike until September or whatever. But I'll probably just make another channel just for streaming or whatever, so that I can run it. But the problem with that is you have to have like a hundred subs before you can live stream and all that bullshit. So. So they gave you a strike because, like, you basically made a parody of it. Well, it was a little more than a parody. <laughs> I mean, I, I went full tilt on it, but uh, I, it's still available on VidMe. But the uh, I got I got I got a lot of uh, trolls. I got a lot of people coming in. Oh, you can't say this about gay people and LGBTQ. It's not a disorder. It's not a mental disease. Uh, but there was a lot of you know positive trolling and and feedback as well so it, it was just huge it was it was there, i had like there were so many freaking comments i was getting up yeah and addressing every goddamn comment and then yeah they took it down so you know that's for, uh for hate speech violations that's kind of funny i did a transgender video like a while ago and i basically said the same thing you know it used to be called gender dysphoria or it used to be called gender identity disorder now it's gender dysphoria. It is a mental illness, and but I guess it only had like thirty views, so maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, they don't care about you if you're not getting any attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two hundred fucking subs from that video, man. Just about. Good God. Yeah. That's Jesus. You doubled your fucking sub count on the one I know. video. <laughs> Why don't you make my next video for me? Do you want a Do you want a community <laughs> strike? Let me ask. You. Do I want a community? <laughs> a little less of the hate speech, maybe. <laughs> it wasn't hate speech. I'm just like these people are fucking degenerate, and you don't understand that. You know your ally alliance with Islam is going to cause them to kill you. Right. And I pushed that that point home in several subsequent videos, but those didn't get taken down yet. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway. Uh, what G twenty riot we can talk about? Sure. There's a fucking Anifa in Hamburg. Oh, this is it was ironic, right? 
because they're running around looting stores and shit, burning cars, uh, and they're fucking protesting the environment. The whole reason they were up in arms is because the U.S. pulled out of the climate accord, right? The Paris Accord. And so they're running around burning shit. <laughs> like a bunch of fucking morons. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was funny. I was I was going to set up my green screen and make a, a fucking parody of the, like a satire. Yeah. Of this. I was going to have uh, the burning streets in the background and I was going to act as a CNN reporter. <laughs> Be like, here we are. I was uh, live the G20 summit and uh, everything's here. going great here. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, then I, I get a call real quick. And I'm like, oh, oh, the, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. And I press a button and it turns into the night, like a nice pre summit city where there's flowers. And <laughs> because CNN totally did that, they're, they're the only footage they showed was, hey, everything's good here. We had a good show. And that's all, folks. And they just, they just picked like the, a nice little flower bed with like a, a monument behind them to record Are you that. Are kidding me? No, no, CNN was complete garbage. That's what they they did. And see, I don't I even like watch them, shit. so I I don't. It's like I make fun of them all the time, but I don't even watch their shit. They probably provide some real good nuggets. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I wanted to make fun of that because the meanwhile there was totally the the burning of the city. Yeah. So. Oh fuck. You had people putting uh, signs in their windows saying, please don't loot our store. Yeah. Shit, that's all you need to do? Could I put one there on my house? Please don't rob yeah. my house. I mean, it doesn't work here in Philly when they say, if you can't order in in, in English, then don't order. Mm, well, I actually, work um, <laughs> I saw a tweet, or I maybe it was a tweet, I don't know, someone did a video of him driving in Germany. And it's showing all the burnt cars on the side and the burnt buildings. It's like, I wonder what the carbon footprint of that is. Yeah. That's the whole yeah. point they're trying to, to protest, you know, the environment or free the environment from the bad Trump and the bad people. That's because no, we let these yeah. people like Apple run roughshod over our democracies. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, what's totally it, fucking embarrassing is when you're watching all these Antifa members go out and, and, and protesting and just seeming to just destroy everything at large. What's funny enough is that the Germans all of a sudden had a police force. Um, it just seemed to magically appear out of nowhere, as if all these problems with migrants running around and looting, as if that never happened. But, you know, this police force magically appears to deal with the riots, and they come out in the tens of thousands. And it has to, it really makes you wonder where they were those couple, uh, the last couple of years prior. It's Merkel's it's, personal uh, EU army. Yeah. yeah, it's Merkel's EU army coming out of hiding. Like, this is not a drill. I mean, she did like threaten Poland. With Poland's the, not going to put up with it. They'll they'll nah. self immolate before they before they give in. I thought yeah. I saw somewhere that German uh, journalists were not able to report on the on, on the migrant crimes in Germany, and if they did, they would actually be mm -hmm. deported from Germany. I can't remember where I saw that, at, but do you guys ever see that? I believe it. Oh, I, yeah, I, I heard something like that. Yeah, I read. I something just figured it was a jailing and some maybe some traditional Islamic like fifty lashes or something. I don't know. <clears throat> it's crazy though. But but Trump made a great showing at G twenty, right? He fucking yeah. killed it. <laughs> Apparently, he yep. said something nice about Merkel. Did he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he complimented her on running a nice show. There's that at least. Nice show. <laughs> yeah, she's a why, she like, why does she always look like she's on the verge of crying? It probably because of Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she's having the typical woman like uh, inner breakdown when she's around people she doesn't like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be man streaming without like shit talking uh, against women well, of some sort. Here's a question for you, uh, Angela Merkel, smash or pass? It's pass, pass, oh. pass, 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 pass. pass. 
Oh, gosh. I don't know, boys. She has lots of shekels right here. I, you know, <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering, who are we going to smash or pass this episode? <laughs> you, you picked, I didn't know. That's why I threw it in now. <laughs> you picked the, the easiest one. It's, it's a very clear pass from almost everyone, probably. <laughs> Jack Nicholson now or 1976? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I did see a picture Jesus. of Hillary Clinton when she's about six. So, I mean, she actually looked hey, okay, like a normal we're person. We're not in this Islamic country, though. You know, hey, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll I be can't honest. say she, smash or pass on that. <laughs> she wasn't bad in the early 90s. I'm not going to lie. It'd probably yeah. be, I don't know. I might be smash on that. I don't she's, know. The hair was everywhere. Yeah, she she had her college she photos. She didn't look too bad. Oh, when you when you, when you said hair, I wasn't thinking of her head hair. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's why I started. That's laughing. why I laughed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking gutter. Me, that's like what the show cute. is. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up, guys. <laughs> Can't yeah, even have a nice like, fucking political chat. <laughs> Stop throwing pubes into the mix. I can't tell you how many <laughs> places I go where I'm trying to talk politics, right? And all it is is pictures of porn women, like women in porn. It's like, okay, well, how about Asians? And then it's a whole thing on Asians. And then it's like, okay, but then they threw a bunch of lady boys in there, and they start like <laughs> <laughs> making fun of. I don't people. even know. Like, oh, I like that one. What? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you talking politics? At? <laughs> yeah, no shit, man. Thailand? <laughs> Good. Like, come on. Going to Pornhub. Trying no, to talk Facebook. about. <laughs> oh, Facebook. <laughs> Damn. There's your problem. Stay off Facebook. I know. I know. I've been spending more time on, on the Donald, though, on Reddit. That's the only corner of Reddit that's not pure cancer. Pretty much. Oh, it's man. the only sub I subscribe okay, to on my news. Was... All right. I'm going you know, to take off like a bird in the wind. All right, man. Stay longer. Bye. Good to see you, man. Later. <clears throat> uh, what else we got? Don Jr. emails? Don Jr. emails, right. Which is kind of a big nothing burger. What's your take on that, Piper? You know... It, it, what you said, it's basically is a nothing burger. The mainstream media, they're going to use that as more reinforcement that Trump clue with Russia, even though there is no evidence. I think Don Jr. actually being proactive and yeah. giving it his information out beforehand will help. I think that Mueller will actually um, investigate it, but I don't see it going anywhere at all. It's just going to be more rhetoric against Trump, right. but it won't have any kind of effect on Trump at all. So uh, some background on the whole incident. It was uh, Natalia something or other uh, was a lawyer, I believe, from Russia. Was it? Right. And he was he was uh, or she was trying to get in contact with him uh, over information. I, I'm I'm saying this because we didn't get backstory. So uh, you know, of course, he's like, "Fuck yeah, tell me the goods." And then apparently when they got to their meeting, there was like no information, no goods, and they just wanted to talk about other bullshit. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I, is is it a crime to want to hear the fucking dirt on someone? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think that even if they got information and used it for the campaign, that it would have been a crime. Honestly. No. You know, I, I think I heard on the Buck Sexton podcast. I listen to him a lot. He's actually a he's he, yeah he's a good radio host. But he was saying something on the lines of like, illegally, Trump could actually meet someone from Russia on the goods to get the goods on Hillary Clinton. But if it turned out that that Russia was actually an undercover spy, that doesn't mean that Trump actually worked with the Russian government at all. Because to you know, to Trump it could be some Russian businessman who worked with Podesta, who knows about Podesta and stuff like that. So they're trying to always like find this link between Trump and the Russian government. But Trump could legally talk to anyone in Russia, and they could say they're not in government, and they could give him information on Hillary or whomever, and he would still be all right by that. I mean, it might be bad in the public opinion, but it's actually not illegal at all. Yeah, I'm not even yeah, sure I how I feel about that. 
Uh, I, th- I don't think I'd care, especially being on the Trump train, right? <laughs> you just kind of, you just kind of like, okay, whatever. It's Trump. You you kind of expect this by now, right? Well, isn't it like pretty common practice for between all politicians to get info and smear the other? Yeah. yeah. If we're just talking about gathering info here, there's nothing wrong with that. If we're talking about them planning a fucking hacking, that's different. But that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. It's not like he went over there and was like, oh, we need you guys to hack the DNC because we don't even know it was Russia. You know, we on the right assume it was Seth Rich leaking the email. Yeah. No, all, all we know is that Russia has uh, spied on us. And that's, right. we, every country spies on every country. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> the New York Times uh, even said, we we have tapped Merkel's fucking phones. And that was, right. uh, you know, it's... Snowed in, yeah. It's, it's no secret, like... There's nothing here. There's really nothing. No, that's that's the thing about it too. It's really uh, it's really ironic. You know, they try to make Russia as this big bad bear that wants to destroy the world. Yet everything they do in terms like of cyber hacking things like that is synonymous with what we do ourselves. Right. I, mean, I did the video yes. in the past on twenty seven admitted false flags and some of the stuff that the U.S. government has actually done to its own citizens and its close allies. It's something that is just egregious, you know. I mean, they set up the Gulf of Tonkin incident to try to garner support for the Vietnam War. I mean, uh, Operation Northwoods, Operation Big Itch, Rob Kick. We have done some horrible things. So, if, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I put Russia that in there tried for into ours, <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure we tried hack- hacking the Russia as well. So I don't see the problem. Well, if my video on the. Uh... The, this latest Comey fiasco, I said, Comey admitted in, in May when he was testifying with in front of the House Select Intelligence Committee, or t- Committee on Intelligence or whatever, uh, with Mike Rogers that, yeah, it wasn't only Russia that was attempting to hack or interfere during this time. It, it's just the fact that there was no, there, there's no reason to believe they were successful from anything that they've seen. This, was, isn't, this isn't news. I don't know why people are surprised that other countries are trying to hack us. You know, this is why we have cybersecurity. This is why we have banks that like flip out anytime something gets wrong with their code, and you're there for 24 hours trying to fix the fucking problem. You guys remember? I think it was 96 or 98, was it? With the whole Stuxnet fiasco yeah. and Iran and the their nuclear infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that was us. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we we've been we've been planting these seeds to like be able to shut down countries' infrastructures, and and to <laughs> to to be even to be pissed off if some other country tries to influence an election is asinine. Yeah, you know, th- there's all the neocons in Congress. And they are all saying that you know Russia is evil, the, the evil of the world. Yet we and we should be afraid of them. Yet we outspend Russia on the military ten to one. So I don't think we need to be afraid of Russia as much as some of the neocons in our own Congress who want perennial war, who want to go to war all the time with Russia and the Middle East. You know, it might have even been you. I was watching uh, Piper, where um, someone was talking about the the amount of fronts that America could open and still be successful. Um, yeah, I think that might maybe be. it wasn't. No, I think so. I was talking about that. I don't know if you were. Well, I think it might have been one of our other streams. That's that's possibly true. Like I forget where I get this information from, but it's like America could open infinite fronts and still be <laughs> and still be victorious. Yeah, it's it's predicted that America could fight the entire world and still not be destroyed, right? Based on our military. And the size of the size of it and our technology and all that. Yeah. That's, so yeah, I don't know why we're so scared of Russia. That's that was the point. You know, I know too we have troops in over 130 countries. It's just like so pretty much if anything happens in the world, we're there with either intelligence resources or we can send the special forces. So yeah. people that are afraid of Russia is gonna kill us. 
I think it should be the other way around. I think Russia should be afraid of us. Well, I think they are, and they're trying to work with us. And unfortunately, because of the tone in our country and our government, uh, they're unable to do so. Yeah. And so, you know, you wonder why they try to t uh, take advantage of strategic activities such as annexing Crimea, because they clearly didn't want to be in Ukraine anyway. <laughs> and then uh, the, we got to punish them for it, right? Because we're the fucking world police. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, if, you, if, if Trump was to go to Crimea and say, what do you guys think? Are you cool with Russia or are you cool with Ukraine? They're going to tell him Russia, and then we just drop the fucking point. I know that um, McCain and Lindsey Graham were in Ukraine, I think, last year, and they were trying to garner up some uh, resilience against, like, Ukraine rebels. They want basically Ukraine to use their military so then the U.S. could back them with, you know, weapons and stuff like that to get us more involved into the Ukraine conflict. That, that's just not, that's not yeah. worth it. It's, it. It shouldn't happen either. No, it shouldn't. Uh, from what I know about the whole conflict, it's, uh, they, they wanted, the people wanted to be fucking freed anyway from Ukraine. Right. So... They were kind of like wishy-washy about it the whole time, but the trend was toward Russian alliance, uh, Russia, uh, you know, certainly independence in their own right, but also, you know, under the under the guidance of Russia itself. Yeah. Well, I, I could be wrong. Maybe you guys know this, but like I thought, like Crimea was part of Russia, but NATO just gave it to Ukraine just to kind yeah. of screw Russia over. Yeah, that's what happened uh, when the USSR collapsed. Yep. Yeah, so if, if I was Putin, yeah, I would say, well, it's mine technically. I would want it back. And if all the Crimean people want to be with Russia, I don't see the problem with it. But like yep. Coffey said, since we're the world police, it's a problem for us. Well, the, the only reason we're the world police in the first place is because our military industrial complex, quote unquote, the deep state, whatever, has a problem with Russia. They can't push globalism if we're friends with Russia because it's the two most powerful countries in the world. Yep. You know, if we have a working relationship with Russia, there's absolutely no reason uh, for us to kowtow to any other country for any reason, really. We, we need that kind of uh, Russian uh, belligerence, I think, in our own politics. So what do you guys think of... I mean, there's a theory going around that the reason... I guess Trump and his State Department are being kind of hostile towards Russia is to try to negate the opinion that Trump is colluding with Russia. Do you think he's doing that or do you think, or what do you guys think? I think, uh, I'm pretty sure he probably discussed this with Putin, <laughs> you know, at the G20 summit. Yeah, he has like, to act a certain way, yeah. Yeah, look. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they even uh, mentioned what they talked about. Um, yeah. He said that, you know, I talked with Putin extensively about the collusion and uh, I have my opinion, and he has his, and we're leaving it at that. Right. It's over with. Shut the <laughs> fuck up, everybody. Basically. Did you, did you guys see how CNN and other meat organizations are trying to dissect their handshake, trying to figure out things <laughs> yeah. about it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I watched the handshake. I'm like, okay, well, uh, Trump wasn't able to do his uh, trademark pool. That means, you know... Either he wasn't trying too hard because he's not trying to strong arm Russia, or uh, Putin maybe just Putin's just strong. a fucking man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I I saw a funny video on the the whole closing moments of of Putin and Trump's talk, and Putin, you know, he's sitting there. They're each in their own chair right next to each other, and the, it's a photo op. And Putin leans over and says, supposedly he said, are these the ones that insulted you? Yeah. And and Trump's like, oh, yeah, these are the ones and points at the audience. <laughs> and then they both lean back and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it starts playing like the fucking Russian anthem as Putin's like <laughs> laughing. <laughs> because some translations are like, are these the ones making fun of you? Or, or are these the ones hurting your feelings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn. Man. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's all I've really heard about that. 
But uh, CNN, on the other hand, has continued its downward trend. You know, no matter what they do, they're. I think they're done. Yeah, they're number I think, gotta 30. Be. I was seeing Nick at Night has better ratings now than CNN. Yeah, wow. <laughs> And I don't watch Nick at Night. I never did, but that's so always the Food Channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? Uh, with their app on the store, do you guys hear about this? Where they had removed the app because it got so many negative ratings. The CNN app. Yeah, on the on the Apple Store. Nice. They removed the fucking app, scrubbed the ratings, put it back up, right? Okay. Oh and you know, went back to like a four star. Fake or whatever. news. That's what it is. I know. They went back to like a even their app app. Reviews. And then within <laughs> a couple hours of they had shut down reviews for a while, but within a couple hours, I was able to get back in there and put a review on it again, <laughs> and it's got <laughs> on a one fucking star. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I, 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 so fake, so fake of news that even your fucking app reviews are fucking <laughs> fake and altered. <laughs> I, I, I saw YouTube do that as well with more than a refugee. They had to take yes. that down. Did they? Yep. Had like over three hundred thirty thousand yeah. dislikes and pair of like eighty thousand likes, and they had to re-upload it. Then and it still got the same. Huh. <laughs> Just got killed again. No, we don't want to let people know that people don't actually agree with this bullshit. Let's delete it and try again. I don't know what they're trying to pull, but uh, speaking of YouTube, uh, pushing their own fucking narrative, I mean, just like everyone else. Yeah. But yeah, I I guess the uh, the other thing that's going on is the the Comey memos, where it turns out that some of them were classified, it contain classified information. I didn't actually hear any of this. You guys want to fill me in? Yeah. Uh, uh, you want to take it, Redbeard? No, I don't. I haven't heard this either. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. I was. Uh, I'm interested, but I don't know. All right. Well, I I threw up a quick video on this yesterday, uh, because I saw Donald Trump tweet out about uh, the Comey memos. Uh, I can't remember what exactly he said, um, but basically it was like um, apparently Comey's memos were classified. Uh, but let me just pull it up here. It's going to take a minute because my computer is Twitter. Co Comey's memos were classified? Apparently, As according can... to the Hills article on this. I mean, that um, would make... So I did a video... Go, oh, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say that made makes sense because when the FBI director, whether he's a private citizen or whether he's working for the government as a director or just as an agent... Talking to the president is privileged information. It's called executive privilege. Right. So he really had no right, even though those his own personal memos, he still had no right to leak it to the media. Right. Well, he said this a bunch of times in his hearings, right? He's like, oh, well, I can't really talk about my conversations yeah. with, the with the president. You motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you he motherfucker. Doesn't do it. so he leaks it. <laughs> or release it. Yeah. Oh, but but this just constitutes as my recollection of the of the situation. Uh uh, I'm trying to trying to find the fucking tweet here. Yeah, just because you're the originator of some document doesn't mean you can declassify it right on the spot. There's only one right. person who can do that, and that's Hillary. The president. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Hillary thinks she can. Yeah, yeah, she thinks she can. But no, the president. That's that's one of the things people were like. President gave classified info to Russia. No, he no, he fucking didn't. Because if he's saying it, he it's it's not classified. That's that's how that works. I looked up the law and I posted this, and I think one of my videos, uh, yeah. the law says he can, uh, the president can classify or declassify anything at any time. Basically, yeah, because he's the president. <laughs> There's no one higher in the the chain of command for the country in the right. You know, it's commander in chief. So. Um, I can't find the tweet, but basically it was about Comey's memos being classified. So that sent me on a hunt because I was fucking fucking around playing video games yesterday. I had no intention of making a video. And you uh, out watching some some anime porn and some hentai and yeah, playing video games. I was on my my third round of uh, pocket 
uh, <laughs> pocket pool watching tentacle porn when I saw go. a tweet from Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, guys! I gotta to get on Twitter for this. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> the, the Donald is speaking. <laughs> the God Emperor has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you guys see um, that Linda Southsour declared jihad on the White House? Oh fuck! Was that part of her whole speech there, where she's uh talking about? Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. I've been trying to ignore her, honestly. I, I feel like she's just hurting it's for pure attention. Answer. So it is. You know, to avoid it. She always tries to advocate for Sharia law. If you actually look at Sharia law, I mean, they throw gays off of rooftops. They uh, kill their daughters for being raped. I mean, this is so much, I guess, negativity in that ideology and so much violence that I don't see how anyone can call themselves a feminist and then support Sharia law. It's just contradicting each other. People ask her about that all the time, and she's like, well, you don't know what Sharia is because I'm a Muslim and I know and you can't know. It's, yeah. It doesn't make sense. She she always she never actually gets to that point. She's always like, "Well, that's that's uh, not Sharia. It's kind of like the not all Muslims thing." Yeah, it's it's just bullshit. No, she's fucking delusional. Uh, if she's not, you know, someone working with the enemy to to bring Sharia, she's fucking delusional. You know, the thing with Muslim nations, too, they always want to say that, like, Trump's travel ban is racist. But if you look at the Global Terrorism Index, which rates nations on a scale of 1 to 10, of which how much terror they have, I mean, the top five are Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Syria. And it's just Nigeria. I mean, these are all Muslim-majority nations. So it's not like this is racism or being a demagogue to say that terrorism happens in Muslim-majority nations. It is fact. It's not racist. It's not demagoguery. It's fact. I disagree. I think, I think you're racist. <laughs> you're, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we both took that in the same direction, Copy. <laughs> I, like, I disagree. You're. I think you're just a bigot. You're racist. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, that is how it goes. Anyway. Um, but getting back to the, the Comey memos, um, I don't know... Stefan Molyneux took it a, a step further than I did, which, of course, he would because he's Stefan Molyneux. Um, but I had said in my my uh, my video on the subject that, um, you know, anytime you do something for a job in any other capacity, right, anytime, anything you do on company time with company materials belongs to the company, right? They can sue you for it. They can fire you over it and take that. And you can't do shit about it. So I don't know right. how Comey thinks that Anything he does at the FBI doesn't ultimately belong to the FBI. You know, using, I don't know, an FBI fucking pen or stationery on FBI time, you know, and all of a sudden this is now his personal document. He can do whatever with it. Well, you know, that's, that's not legitimate. No. Comey's personality is like he is a self righteous, a benevolent leader who is trying to end corruption. You know, like he really has a big ego of himself that he can't do any wrong. So whatever he does, it's justified in his mind as being good because he's doing it for the goodness of America. It's yeah, a he's got the it's same a... mind virus the Clinton, the Clinton cronies yeah, do. Exactly, exactly right. I was going to say, he is one. Yeah, I was, was going to say, do you think it's really that, or do you think maybe he might be so far down a fucking hole right now that now uh, everything's catching up to him? He's trying to play, uh, play it on the defensive. I don't see how he can. Know. No, I, I would agree with Coffee. I think because when he whenever he first started too with the whole uh, press conference regarding Hillary, that was something that never happened before. You know, unprecedented. And then over his, uh, I guess, hearings in Congress, he did kind of have that same mentality that, well, I'm doing it right. This is the only way to do it properly. Like he thought yeah. he was doing everything the right way. But well, I'm director of the fucking FBI, so obviously yeah. I'm doing it the right way. <laughs> What you're doing? Yeah, well, yeah. There's, there's that. That's, that's almost like a different uh, uh, situation to me, though. Clearly, Clinton is was in the wrong and guilty. Whoever, I think everyone can agree to that. Yeah. Uh, and then he he chose to say no. Uh, we're not going to recommend charges. Well, this is this is a um, year after the fact, after all of that happened, that it's coming out that now, Comey. Uh, 
is probably guilty of the same thing he avoided prosecuting Hillary for, which is removing classified information from government storage, uh, property, uh, apparatus, whatever. <laughs> yeah, if he, yeah, if he did that, if he actually took it off property, he yeah, is so, guilty of that. So where I was going to with the Stefan Molyneux point, right, is if uh, he did that, then he's probably his his, uh, his take on that whole situation with Clinton is probably moot, null and void whatever at this point in the investigation should be reopened. But the problem with Mueller is that he's kind of like a menor to Comey. So uh, Mueller should have to recuse himself from this whole situation. Yeah, I would agree with that. So that, what? You know, that would be great. That would, that would be probably closer to the kind of justice that we would want, you know, to say, okay, well, this guy clearly is guilty of the same crime, so he obviously couldn't have done this fairly. You know, this kind of goes back a little bit to, like, when they say Trump fired Comey to end the investigation into him. It's yeah. like, Comey was not the FBI. I mean, when, when he fired Comey, he put Andrew McCabe, the deputy director, in charge. Well, mm -hmm. Andrew McCabe's wife donated to the Clinton campaign. Mm -hmm. She's a lifelong Democrat in support of Hillary. So I don't think he helped himself by firing Comey and getting someone else in charge who is against him, politically speaking. Right. I wonder if he was aware of that at the time, or if it was a knee-jerk firing type deal. I mean, he should have been fired. I think he should have been fired right away, though, but the people are like, he fired him at the wrong time. There really was no right time to fire him. Even if he would have fired him on January 20th, he still would have gotten attacked by people on the left that say he did it for whatever reason. That They would turn to political no matter what. There, there was no reason to investigate Comey, investigate his effectiveness, whatever, you know, over that time period, and then decide to fire him. There, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's no reason to think that there's something wrong going on here. Because it's the FBI. You know, if you're coming in as an incoming president with no previous government experience, uh, probably you need more information on the subject before you make a decision. Because it could have been a very bad thing if he wasn't such a fuckhead, but Unfortunately, <laughs> Comey really is just that dumb. Did you guys see the Maxine Waters video on MSNBC where no. the anchor, I was surprised, the anchor actually uh, attacked her because he asked her if she was happy that Comey got fired. And she's like, no. He's, and he played a video clip of her actually saying that Comey has no credibility and Comey should be fired. And she was just trying to sputter for words. Nice. And, yeah, <laughs> I, it, it's awesome. If I should send you guys a link when this is all over because it's... It's great. She's nice. such a clown. Yeah, that's probably worth watching. Uh -huh. well, so, yeah, my last video about her, it was that called uh, Wigs in Prison. <laughs> I think that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> James Whatever Brown. her last drama was, I don't even remember. I did... I did a video of her too in the past and I cut her head off her shoulders. I put on on top of a donkey. And it, looked, <laughs> it, it looked just like her. I'm not going to lie. You could see her being set dark. Is that because the donkey was brown? Yeah. That's racist. Well, her face too during it. She kind of has like weird grimace. Like, so yeah. on top of a donkey, it looked perfect. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was titled uh, Maxine Waters Should Be President. It was a satire because on Vox <laughs> or Salon, they did a spoof on why it should be the perfect president. So I had to kind of tear that apart and put her on top of a donkey. Did you watch her in, the, uh, in any hearings or whatever that are televised, and she's just completely like not even on the fucking track, right, when it comes to asking pertinent questions. It's all partisan bullshit. On her interview or at press conference, she said that Putin invaded Korea and she couldn't get like Trump's name right. She's calling him Bush and stuff. Same as Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. She's such a clown. <clears throat> Let's see here. James Comey memos, net neutrality. Well, it makes me feel I really need to start focusing a little bit more on state and local elections because that's this is about the time where it's going to start ramping up. You know, uh, senators, um, 
I th we have a governor race coming up. We need to get our current one out. Fucking Tom Wolf, piece of shit. Um, the guy running against him though is named Mango. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Mango he should win automatically. Wolf yeah, versus Mango. <laughs> Harambe. <laughs> The Harambe Party of Pennsylvania. <laughs> God damn. The Har Jesus. No, I was on my last job. I was actually a clerk for my Senate Judiciary Committee, and so I dealt with all the legislation, and it was it was pretty cool. I mean, it sounds kind of bad saying that to preface this comment, but, I mean, people would come in. It was about a lot of sex trafficking and human trafficking, and you meet, like, a lot of people that are, I guess, cops and victims, and it's it was really interesting. Sad, but really interesting. Yeah, you get you get when you're in a position like that, you really get a finger on the pulse of what's going on around you. Oh yeah. <clears throat> uh, did we did we sufficiently cover net neutrality? Uh, we have not talked about net neutrality. Okay, well, that we must have been pre-stream. Was... Yeah, it was pre-stream. We talked about it a little bit. Just uh... I'm gonna get some coffee if you want to intro that. Sure. So, uh, Piper, do you know anything about nope. Uh, that? or Nope. No? Okay. So, a few years back, uh, a net neutrality bill was introduced. And basically, it, it, you know how kind of with cell phone uh, services, you have uh, your data limits and they charge you just outrageous fucking fees for more gigabytes of data and all that. Well... Yeah. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with the net. Uh, what the net neutrality bill wants wanted to introduce, um, not only to fight censorship to prevent these private uh, companies to fight censorship of the internet, but to prevent the uh, the fuck is that noise? Coffee must be. <laughs> <laughs> but they wanted to prevent uh, overcharging uh, to say, hey. We'll give you this very basic speed, but if you pay three hundred bucks a month, we'll give you you know the speed that's actually reasonable type deal. Everything has to be it's it's to maintain reasonability between or uh, between the providers and the servers provided. So Wait, no censorship. Oh god, I was just gonna say no censorship and uh, to provide a fair service. We're, we're uh, a it's essentially what that's so focused on equality this, equality that. Equality hit me with a wiffle ball bat. Um, <laughs> you that, also have the... We, 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 we want to consider allowing uh, fucking Comcast, whatever, extra governmental entities, right, to decide, you know, the equality of, you know, content on the internet, right? But we can't be having that. You know, if, if you are constantly going to the government for... Race equality, women's equality, uh, sexual orientation equality, to then turn around and then say, "Well, we don't need uh, equality of free speech," which is really what this is about, right? Because you know this is the wild west, the pioneer, the great frontier of free speech. Uh, not YouTube; it's like on the edge of the frontier. But uh, so, um, is this? You know, it's, it's an FCC rule. So is this new, or is this being discussed, or was this implemented, or what's going on with that then? I guess I'm just kind of confused on like how this it's, started. Okay, so so it's it, like I said, it started a couple years back, um, because I, I think there was suspected foul play, or there, and and so a bill was introduced to stop that. Uh, and now it's it, apparently they're trying to fight it and uh, repeal it. Um, let's read from, uh, it's called savetheinternet.com, net neutrality, what you need to know. Okay. Uh, starts off the title, net neutrality, what you need to know. When you go online, you have certain expectations. You expect to be connected to whatever website you want. You expect that your cable or phone company isn't messing with the data and is connecting you to all websites, applications, and content you choose. You expect to be in control of your internet experience. When you use the internet, you expect net neutrality. Net neutrality is the basic principle that prohibits internet services like AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon from speeding up, slowing down, 
or blocking any content applications or websites you want to use. Net neutrality is the way the internet has always worked. In 2015, millions of activists, activists pressured the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, to adopt historic net neutrality rules that keep the internet free and open, allowing you to share and access information of your choosing without interference. Uh, I believe that in 2015 it was uh, the change in the FCC rules to monitor or regulate the internet the way that telephones uh, are, are regulated, which is to say that there's really no regulation. You know, they have to connect telephone calls equally. So what is net neutrality? Net neutrality is the internet's guiding principle. It preserves our right to communicate freely online. Net neutrality means an internet that enables and protects free speech. It means that ISPs should provide us with open networks and shouldn't block or discriminate against any applications or content that ride over these networks, just as your phone company shouldn't decide who you can call, uh, who you, what you can say on that call. Your ISP shouldn't interfere with the content you view or post online. Without net neutrality, cable and phone companies could carve the internet into fast and slow lanes. An ISP could slow down its competitor's content or block political opinions it disagreed with. ISPs could charge extra fees to the few co content companies that could afford to pay for preferential treatment, relegating everyone else to a slower tier of service. This would destroy the open internet. What would happen if we lost net neutrality? The internet without net neutrality isn't the internet. Unlike the open internet that has paved the way for so much innovation and given a platform to people who have historically been shut out, it would become a closed down network where cable and phone companies call the shots and decide which websites, content, or applications succeed. Um, I'm going to skip some, but go ahead. That makes sense. You're going to have a, a, a internet company that's exactly like YouTube and shuts off your shit when you're make, you make, make a video that <laughs> they don't agree with. Mine, I was well, kind of worried. Spicy. <laughs> I was kind of worried about that after Obama gave the rights of the internet to the UN. There, I know the people were pushing against that. Cruz, especially, and still yeah. gave the rights away. Yeah, you the still thing, did it. Uh, the thing about that was it was only for ICANN, the Internet Registry, I believe. Yeah, which handles domains and uh, re uh, not registrations because those are farmed out, but. The IP address handling, basically. I'm going to get a cup, so, cup of coffee quick. All right. But, uh, but yeah, they, uh, they wouldn't be able to, to say censor anything that you had coming into your country and um, uh, or anything you put out in your country. It's, not, I mean, it's just, a, I think, essentially an IP registrar provider. Yeah, well, and we... We know that Comcast slash Verizon donate to political campaigns. Mm -hmm. They contribute to different candidates. And you can see that they're, they're ingratiating themselves with the kind of politicians that we really don't want in there, right? If yeah. we're getting a guy in there who's willing to accept this money from these people, you know, you got to wonder, you know, what, what kind of favors are they asking from, et cetera. So, but we, we can't be having this. I, I know they've got all kinds of money they want to spend on all kinds of shit, but at the end of the day, uh, it can't be like flowing to our politicians and influencing policy. I mean, we just can't be having that. So, uh, let's let's continue here. Didn't we already win strong net neutrality rules? Yes. After a decade-long battle over the future of the internet, FCC adopted strong net neutrality rules based on Title II of the Communications Act, giving internet users the strongest possible, strongest protections possible. But ever since then, opponents have done everything they can to destroy net neutrality, and Chairman Pai, a former Verizon lawyer, is moving to fast destroy the open internet. He must be stopped. Why is Title II so important? Courts rejected two earlier FCC attempts to craft net neutrality rules and told the agency that it, if it wanted to adopt such protections, it needed to use proper legal foundation, Title II. In February 2012, the FCC did just that, I'm sorry, February 2015, the FCC, C, the FCC did just that, giving <laughs> Internet users the strongest possible net neutrality rules when it reclassified broadband providers as common carriers under the Title II. Title II gives FCC the authority it needs to ensure that companies like AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon 
can't block, throttle, or otherwise interfere with web traffic. Title II pre preserves the Internet's level playing field, allowing people to share and access information of their choosing. These rules have ushered in a historic era of online innovation and investment and have withstood two court challenges from the industry. But, but Chairman Pai wants to ditch Title II and return to the FCC, uh, return the FCC to a light touch article, Title I approach. Translation, Pai wants to give control of the internet to the very companies that violated net neutrality for years before the FCC adopted its current rules in 2015. Title I would do nothing to protect internet users like you. Uh, Isn't Germany doing something like this already? The government, they're basically cracking down on hate speech. Yeah, well, they, they, they're they introducing legislation that would um, basically mandate that social sites like Facebook remove hateful or offensive content within 24 hours or face like a, an insane fine. Yeah, this is uh, what Germany is doing is not quite the same thing because this would allow the providers to just cut you off and cut your content off, whatever you're doing based on how they feel. Uh, and what Germany is doing is uh, contacting and demanding the providers do shit and give them information uh, to fight their hate speech or whatever the fuck they're doing over in Germany. Well, I, right. I know with Germany too, I mean, the, the problem with that is who defines hate speech? Like, hate speech exactly. to me is probably a lot different than hate speech to someone on the far left. I, you well, can't. The, way Lauren, the way Lauren Southern uh, demonstrated that, she was like, you can't even say Hitler in Germany without getting arrested or fined. Because it's not something you can talk about. Uh... uh <laughs> A fucking sidebar. Um, have you guys seen that movie? Uh, uh, Guess who's back? No. It's uh, it's on Netflix. It's it's Hitler comes back from de the dead oh. in modern society really? in Germany, and, and apparently the movie had. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've heard they were actual reviews, but uh, the, they have this guy that looks just like Hitler, uh, talking to people like you know who. Uh, what, what would you say uh, uh, if I wanted to bring you know uh, low crime rates and all this to Germany and, and to keep the migrants out and like people are like yeah fuck yeah that's what we need he's like vote for me then and the guy's like yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie it, it, you can't help but sympathize with them this entire time and at the very end of the movie they. <clears throat> They paint him in a bad light, of course, because it's how else could they get away with a movie yeah, like they that? Have to. But uh, but yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm like watching this movie. I'm like, how is any of this stuff he wants a, a a bad thing? Right. But at the end, apparently, he murders the other character he's riding along with, and he's just an awful man. So of course, did you guys did you guys hear the conspiracy that Hitler actually survived and went to Argentina? Yeah. Same well, place I heard on the the Nazi relics. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I heard that not only did he escape to Argentina, but it wasn't his final destination. His final destination was a, a base in Antarctica, where he communed oh. with aliens. Oh God, <laughs> yeah, that's <right. laughs> And and hollow Earth lizard men. What's that, what's and that from? And established his Third Reich there. <laughs> Uh, creepy little book and various other Antarctica conspiracies. Oh. And now, now Hitler is raising a, a Nazi army to to retake what? the Earth. Yeah, uh, not zombie army. I'm sorry, zombie army, <laughs> yeah, Nazi zombie army. Jesus. Yeah, I heard. I heard that bullshit. <laughs> you know, I, I remember I first heard on Sargon's Sargon's channel, and he actually showed like uh, FBI memos saying that there's strong evidence Hitler did get away and stuff like that. And I guess recently, a 127 year old he claims he's 127 says he is Adolf Hitler, and his wife said he's just insane, but <laughs> <laughs> he claims he is. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Into that a little bit. You, on one hand, you have the guy who says he's Hitler in Argentina and all that, but yeah. Uh, I also watched uh, some interviews with people who were uh, Hitler's like right hand men, 
who said, you know, I was I was never apart from Hitler aside from like, you know, a handful of times in the whole five years I was next to him or whatever. He always had me uh, uh, in the same room and everything. And I went into the bunker with him at the uh, at the end of the war. And he he walked out of his room in the bunker and said, you guys can go home. It's over. And then goes back in. And then they, they like waited a few minutes and someone said, it's done. Uh, he's gone. And they opened the door and there he is dead on the ground, you know, and his uh, wife was dead on the couch in the same room. So I don't know. Who do you believe? Well, I think Russia. 127 year old or. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just, well, I mean, Russia, they could get solve this for us. They have his body remains. If we could do a DNA test to match, but they won't let us. But I don't think they have any DNA to match it to, to be honest. But if they did, they could compare it. But Russia won't let that happen. Here's the thing, though. Um, if you watch uh, The Greatest Story Never Told, uh, Adolf Hitler, whatever, yeah. you can see that he was not crazy at first. Um, he really, really did want to help his country. Um, but he got too paranoid with the, the communist shit because he realized how much of a threat it was. And it was it, it just ended up swallowing his country and his army. Right? So he goes nuts, right? Killing, killing Jews over it because there's nothing else to do with them at this point. And uh, I don't think that that kind of paranoia and craziness just goes away. I think it, it ultimately culminates into something like suicide. You can't just escape and then be okay somewhere. You know, you don't have the cognizance to do that. I don't think Hitler, Hitler would have known that escaping to Argentina or Antarctica would mean he would never be able to fight communism again the way that he did before. So I don't think, I really don't think he escaped because we would have, we would have heard something about Nazis since yeah. World War II. <laughs> like real ones, not just skinheads. Yeah, or, I, I, or Anifel LARPers. I saw that documentary. That's, that was actually a pretty good documentary. Yeah. Yeah. What? I, yeah. Yeah. I. It, it really. It, it's it's. It's a it's a big step toward the path of opening your your mind to something that might be different or counter to what you've always heard. Um, it, you know, watching a documentary like that or anything even very similar to it, where. This, this is the first step to the red pill, right? You have to be like, well, what else have I been told that's not quite true? Or what else has been omitted that would have changed my view as a child on these kinds of things? And it all goes back to that whole, um, you know, the, the, the victor's right history type thing. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah uh, but getting big... back... No, go ahead. I was going to say, that's a, you know, a big deal is happening today, too, is that people are so arrogant, both left and the right, that they don't want to hear any other opinion that they don't even want, you know, believe with. So to them, they are right no matter what. And that's why it's, there's so much political polarization. I mean, they don't want to right. get along with anybody. They don't want to hear any other opinion that differs from their own. Yeah, well, and it takes people that are trying to be honest intellectually coming together and talking about these things. Because you could talk with, uh, uh, you know, your typical Anifa foot soldier. They're not going to be intellectually honest with you. You need someone, uh, you know, who might even be sympathetic to their cause, but maybe doesn't quite buy in to, to try to argue for their cause with someone who completely is against it to try to get that kind of, like, merging of, uh, you know, thoughts and opinions and try to come to some kind of consensus on what the actual right path of this, you know, towards the right way for them to go about their uh, their bullshit instead of, like, lighting shit on fire, so. Well, did you I, guys just, he did you guys hear about, uh, um, like, I had a huge argument on this forum I went to, and I don't know if you, I won't really get into it, it's kind of long, but if you heard about the Charlie Guard incident, what happened yeah. with it, and I'm trying to argue that, you know, the government should not have the right to kill someone, to let someone die. And people that I was arguing with on the left, they said, no, the government should have that right. If you are sick, the government should have that right. 
It's just like, are you kidding me? Like, what's next then? This is basically like a death panel. I mean, you are deciding who lives and dies based on your own perception. The parents' right. decision, the child's decision, that, that doesn't matter to them. They choose when someone dies, and that's just, I think, morally wrong. It's kind of the same as uh, being against uh, assisted suicide, right? It's like these people have decided that they're done. And who, who, who's the state to come in and say, well, that's illegal. You shouldn't do that. That's actually murder. You know, they, they really, they're really overstepping their bounds here in the UK with the Charlie Guard thing, where it, it's not up to them to de decide how treatment should proceed. It's not up to the state to take care of your kids. It's your own fucking problem. You know, it's so crazy, too, with that, because, uh, for instance, it is illegal for the doctors to do a euthanasia with somebody. They can get arrested for that and lose their license, but yet they can say, no, this child's going to die. We're not going to treat him. So it's wrong to assist someone to die who's in pain, but it's okay for them to say, you know what, we're not going to treat that kid who's going to die anyways. I mean, that's just contradicts right. each other. Well, it's it's this whole like bleeding heart uh, thing of the left, right, where they don't ever want to give in to something that hurts them. They want to push this off as long as possible, you know, the, these emotional pains. Yeah. Because they can't deal with it. Hypocrisy. You know, the kid's going to die anyway, you know. They raise the money for the treatment. Let them have the fucking treatment, whether it's going to work or not. You know, allow the parents to do what they can, you know, to assuage their own conscious consciousness. No, that's the main thing about it, too, is, like, I, I can understand the government not wanting to spend any more money. I, I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. But the parents have <laughs> fundraised the money themselves. They have over right. $1.8 million that they want to take to the U.S., but the judge says no. Charlie has the right to die in the UK. So they are preventing the parents from trying to do experimental treatment, which is, I think, completely wrong and inhumane. Yeah, the, absolutely overstepping their bounds in the government there. But, I mean, we've come to expect this from Europe, you yeah. know, including the UK. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I just... I want to get back to the net neutrality thing here and finish this. Oh yeah, forgot about um, that. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been sitting here waiting for the fucking the gay Muslims. <laughs> do you want to just do gay Muslims? Fuck net neutrality. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, I'm closing the tabs. So I'm not going to finish reading this, but I'll post it in the chat. I, I've, I'll I'll give a little background. Okay, so in fact, you know, here let me uh, do a screen share. Uh oh, this this should be good. Um, you know, I try to avoid watching fag shit on my screen. Yeah, well, just too fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. So you guys can see. Let me zoom oh, in. On. There we go. <laughs> First of all, I don't know if we even need to go further than uh, the fucking picture. What's what's on his hands? Is that those aren't tattoos, are they? It's um what they use in India. What's that called? Henna. Henna. Yeah. Okay. So he's because he's the bitch. The Looks bottom like bitch. <laughs> do Muslims even do like body mods, like the earrings and shit like that? No. Or, They're okay. not supposed to. No. Because this is apparently the actual Muslim, the the brown guy, and the guy on the left is just his uh, younger boyfriend. So the guy on the right is claiming to be the Muslim, and the guy on the left is like his friend who support his gay friend who support him. And now they love each other, whatever. So I don't think any one of these dudes is an, actually a fucking Muslim. No, I think the guy on the right claims to be. And uh, so yeah, okay, you know what? Fuck it. This is this is their story. <clears throat> Happy oh, fuck. <laughs> Already, I can't even get the first, second word in. Jahed Chaudhry, uh, twenty-four, and Sean Rogan, nineteen. So these guys, uh, very little life experience, especially the white guy Sean Rogan, who's nineteen. Also, uh, collectively between them, have not reached brain maturity. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. God, okay, you know, I already regret wanting to read this. <laughs> this is all you, man. 
Oh, this this is so bad. Okay. Tie you the are the gay Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> the traditional golden Sharani's uh, civil ceremony at uh, Walzel Registry Office. The pair who have been together for two years first met when uh, I'm going to call him Chodri. Uh, Chodri. <laughs> Chodri. Chodri. I don't know. Chodri. We're, we're going to say, uh, we're gonna. I'll just call him Chode. How about that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> first met when Chode was crying on a bench in uh, Darleston. He told the Express of the Star, I would not long overdosed and I was crying on a bench and Sean came over and asked if I was okay. Adding that Sean gave him hope at his lowest point and he has stood by him ever since. Oh, Look how beautiful. many people are there. It's like, it's huge like three crowd. people. I yeah. missed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the camera must be a reporter. This should have no, been no the, uh, the, the cover for Man Streaming 7. Right there. Please no. Okay. Please no. <laughs> Moving on. Chode said that being an openly gay Muslim made him feel like something of a black sheep. You don't say. <laughs> and that he stood out like a sore thumb and often felt trapped between his sexuality and faith. Uh, I think that'd be an obvious decision for him considering he's not a Muslim. But right. he tried to deny his orientation and even tried taking medication, completing a pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia and other, uh, another to Bangladesh where his family originates. Although his family weren't present for the ceremony, <laughs> <laughs> Chode believes the wedding is significant uh, progress for the Muslim LGBT communities alike. He added, my family doesn't want to come on the day. They just don't want to see it. It's too embarrassing for them. No shit. I would agree with your family there, bud. It kind of That's... goes back to what Coffee was saying earlier, too. Like, or I think it was you, Red Beer, that he said that he he's a Muslim, but if you actually like look at the Quran, gays cannot wear you cannot wear earrings in, in Islam. You gays can't get married, so they're saying he's saying he's a Muslim, but he's not actual Muslim, you know. Right. But I'm sure people are no. using this as their um, as a, a political narrative to force peace or to show that you know Islam allows this. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get a lot of hate if anyone ever watches this, but. You also can't be gay and be Christian too. Like, oh, you suck, a against... bitch! No. <laughs> no, this is true. I was, I was against, against the religion. I was going to say he, that myself. It, uh, Leviticus, it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's not even Leviticus. It's it's uh, fornication. You know, you know uh, Jesus even went back to you know marriage is the union between a man and a woman, as it was with Adam and Eve, and uh, you just can't. You just can't. Uh, reconcile this with your religion. So to come out and say, oh, well, I'm Muslim and I'm doing X, it means that you really just don't believe in the religion. You're just using that as some kind of virtue signaling identifier. You know, you know it my doesn't matter if you're going to church or bowing to Mecca three times a day. The fact of the matter is that you're not participating in the religion as intended and therefore are not a representative of that religion. You know, my whole thing with this, too, is that, you know, I'm kind of a libertarian at heart. I believe in limited government. I don't care who gets married, guy and a guy, woman, woman, got brother and sister. But I don't think a church or any type of religious identity should be forced to have that gay couple, or whatever couple, in right. their church. The, you know, that if, when you force a church to do something against their faith, that that is, that's, contradicts their First Amendment. Yeah. So, I mean, I think government should be completely out of marriage. Let whoever do what they want with each other marry, but the churches should not be obliged to uh, fornicate them, if you will. Or you know. is, they, It goes back to uh, my criticism of sticks on the uh, declaring June as a, uh, a, a gay pride month is we need to have marriage privatization. It shouldn't be up to the government to issue contracts based on this. You know, because essentially marriage is a contract, right? You, you agree between the two people to be together and do whatever. And but then they your, wouldn't have your sweet uh, tax uh, statistics. Well, they shouldn't have that. That's the whole thing. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't want equality. They want additional privilege the same way that you know heterosexual couples do. But I don't think anyone should have those privileges because the government's too large. They shouldn't be giving incentives for this in, in that way. It should be like if you can produce children, not adopt, then you get certain incentives, and that's how we reclaim our demographics. But I probably don't want to get into that right now. You know, someone uh, 
someone had that idea once. I believe it was however many kids you have, you get so much money off of a loan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know who, who was that? Yeah. <laughs> Hile, Hile, Hile to the Fuhrer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he wasn't wrong. Wait. No, it's a fucking fantastic idea. I, I'm going to do a video very soon on you know my stance between white nationalism versus civic nationalism. It's coming, believe me. But at the same time, I I can't be sitting here and saying, oh, well, you know, the, the government should allow gays to marry or whatever. It shouldn't even be their fucking business to even say whether they can or can't. It's just the issue of of getting you know tax incentives for this because that's what they really want. It's not like they're going to be contributing to society by producing kids. You know, uh, re recently too, um, I maybe not recently, a couple years ago, but a baker was sued by a gay couple because he refused to give them a oh, gay couple uh, goods, essentially. Right. And a lot, not just because it was against the guy's religion, but if you are a private establishment, you should have the right to deny business to anyone. It doesn't matter if they're straight, gay. That is your private property. That is your private right. You should right. have that right to deny anything. But I mean, the gay couple they they basically got pissed off because they said he was a uh, you know homophobe and all this stuff. It's like no, that's against his religion. And even if it wasn't, he still has the right to deny anyone he wants. Yeah, if he wants to yeah. give up that five hundred, six hundred bucks for the fucking cake, it's his goddamn right to do so. Yeah, yeah. And he can refuse anyone for any other reason. Why not their fucking uh, sexual preference? Yeah. It's, it's the same thing as like criticizing Trump for not allowing blacks in certain properties, right? Because they had established a pattern of not paying, shitting the place up, and then moving out, you know, skipping on the lease. People do this all the time. But now, uh, apparently, like Trump's racist because this was a policy at one time in one of his buildings, you know? It's, it's based on practicality. It's not based on hate. Uh, maybe you could argue that it's based on discrimination on, you know, on the the their color but that's because you've had experience with these people uh, they say stereotypes exist for a reason yeah no. it doesn't just come out of a vacuum no the hell is with crime I rates had, too i had this indian neighbor right and he four o'clock three four o'clock in the morning slamming cabinet doors <laughs> uh moving shit around like loud thumps and I didn't know what the fuck was going on, right? And this is every night he comes home because he's in med school, whatever, a doctor. And I start getting roaches, right? The guy, they, they eventually kicked him out because the guy never cleaned the shit up. They went in to do like a random apartment in inspection. The guy never cleaned up. He had shit everywhere. It was like broken like uh, air conditioning unit parts all over the place. And it's like <laughs> this guy's training to be a goddamn doctor, but he can't, you know, he can't take care of his own shit at home but it's like uh so they, they anytime like an indian would come to like look at a property you knew they weren't going to be moving in because they'd been dealing with this before and they have the right to de deny that service to people you know it kind of comes back to uh the white privilege also like people think because there's so many blacks in prison that it's automatically inherent racism of the cops I mean, uh -huh. you, you look at the statistics. I mean, the fact is that blacks, especially gang members, do kill each other. That's not racist to understand and define that statistic. But since I'm white, I cannot make that claim because I am racist if I do so. Right. It's just hip hypocrisy. Yeah, I just, just talked about they, that same thing. It, it goes back to the left not really wanting to solve any of the issues. Because as long as these issues are in play, they can continue to push their cultural Marxism. They can continue to push their welfare state. You know, oh, these blacks are oppressed. We have to try and prop them up by giving them government assistance and whatever. And it's like, you know, if we really address these issues, we'd actually be able to eliminate them. You know, I read uh, the coolest YouTube comment. I don't, I don't know by heart, but I'll try to remember. Someone posted, like, I am a social Democrat. I believe in liberty, you know, uh, fairness for everyone, et cetera, et cetera. And, I, and then at the end of it, he's, he wrote something like, and I always bitch and moan when I lose the or uh, something like that. It was about, like, how they preach all this peace and stuff, but mm -hmm. then they go and they hate on others that don't conform with their ideology. Right. Well... You know, the with the election of Trump, 
I think we've signaled that that's not going to work anymore. No. You know, I'm not going to be intimidated by people who get offended over what I say anymore because it doesn't work and, it, and the, the degradation of our society continues if we don't speak out. So, I mean, going back to this gay Muslim wedding, right, in the UK of all goddamn places, you know, didn't we just have fucking Ramadan slaughter fest? You know, are you trying to go get people killed? Yeah, it's like I said, they're not fucking Muslims. It's just a fucking show. They're they's obviously gay, but he's he's attention seeking. I right. feel so. I think nothing to see here, guys. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> it's uh, it just it's making the news because they probably called the fucking press and or else how else would they know there was a fucking Muslim wedding, you know? With that many people showing up. There's only five people there. Someone had to let them in on it. It was promoted. Ugh. Well, uh, anything else? That's pretty much it for our topics. You guys have anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, I'm, uh, I'm right. I guess I just want to thank you guys for letting me come on. This is fun. You yeah, man. Shill? Glad to have you on. You want to show any of your videos, Piper? Yeah, sure. I was actually going to send you guys a link to that Maxine Waters one I was looking at here. But um, I guess, yeah, if you guys check out my Tragic Tale of Charlie Guard, that one's my newest one, or The Truth About Gun gun control yeah that one is just actually uh, can we talk about that for a sec gun control go for it so i went on um i did a video about it too and you know the left always pushes that guns are bad etc etc but the cdc did a study that shows 80 percent of gun homicides are from gang members in you know blacks and gang members and the 60 percent of gun deaths are from suicide so mm. statistically taking away people's right to bear arms doesn't actually make them safer it only right. makes them less safe. Like ninety-eight point four percent of mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. <laughs> well, you know, and the only reason Anifa can run around acting like a fool is because they can assume that you're not armed in this society. If if this was seventeen seventy-six, right, you'd be <laughs> you'd be walking around spouting your mouth off. You'd be you'd liable you'd be li liable to get yourself invited to a duel, right? Or, or shot on the spot, even. Right, just insulting someone's honor. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. That's why Andrew Jackson was so badass. He had over a hundred <laughs> duels, and the one, the one duel, he, like I think it was his first one. The guy he went against, I forgot his name. He had like ninety of them under his belt already. He, you know, he was a great shot, and Jackson let him shoot first. Jackson got shot an inch right. in his chest, and then he shoots him and kills him. Jackson well, was badass. Jackson's been was shot at least seven times, as for, uh, for my recollection. I, yeah, I mean, still, over his career, still pushed yeah. On. <laughs> he was nice. badass. I mean, his his greatest yeah. achievement as president, he said, was uh, "I killed the bank." That means he killed the central bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, it's back at, stronger than ever. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't. I but, mean, um, that could lead to shit talk, but <laughs> yeah. There's this whole topic. It's a, it's a pretty spicy one. Uh, you were mentioning the, the crime statistics. Uh, I also had a video on this. It was uh, about the FBI or the CDC crime statistics, actually, I believe. And like you said, they found out uh, homicides, whatever. It's almost all. Uh, there's like hardly any Hispanics or whites. It's almost all black gang members. So we don't really have a gun crime problem. We have a black gang crime problem. Uh, if you if you're looking at just the gun crimes, right. So and how do you how do you deal it, with that? You know, what caused it too is the single mothers. Mothers, if mothers would actually wait in poverty areas to get married and have a children after 21, I guess I forgot where I heard it, but like gun crime would drop exponentially. But there's always fatherless children who go to gangs, go to drug dealing because that's the only way they can actually receive money. Well, that's that's a whole nother topic. It's because women don't need men anymore because they have the welfare state, right? And so, what's what's your incentive there? 
you get more money having more fatherless kids. Well, and then they have this culture that revolves around the the the, the males killing each other all the time. Yeah. You know, you guys if, if they it? wanted to do this, we should have just left them in Africa. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least then it wouldn't be hurting our society. Did you guys well, hear was... that uh, Chank, Uger, or whatever, is going to debate Ben Shapiro at Politicon this year? I oh, saw shit. that. Ben Shapiro is going to be a shit show. Yeah, ben Shapiro is going to kick his ass. He, I think Chank might even kill himself afterwards. <laughs> Chank is going to be so red, his head will explode. Yeah. Because uh, Ben does not let up. No, Ben is a he is intelligent. I mean, I don't agree with everything he says, but the man I mean he yeah. graduated college at twenty, law degree at twenty three at Harvard. I mean, the guy always has facts. He's a he's a genius and he, he knows every play that Chank's gonna do. Chank's gonna try to play the crowd and make it seem like you know Ben's just a racist and right. Ben's gonna just kick his ass. I'm excited. That's all he can do. That's all uh Chank, Chank. can do. Yeah, he's a Ben fucking... needs to walk in there dressed like Hitler. <laughs> That's, he's, he's, you know, he can play he's the ultimate card. card. He can play the ultimate card, right? Well, I'm a Jew, right? So I can say this, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> or he rips his shirt off, and it's an SS uniform shirt. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Ben Shapiro, but I'm very, very interested in seeing how this plays out because Chank's so easy to trigger; it's not even funny. And then they but have actually uh, it's hilarious. But <laughs> they have Ann Coulter then debating who's the who's the bitch with Chank? What's her name? Oh, that um, shit is fucking awful. What's her? What is her name? Anna Kasparian. Kasparian. I think it's her. Right? That's. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, she's another one. I, a, okay. I, you know, I really just want to see Alex Jones go against Chank Uger again. Can Anna, Anna Kasparian smash yeah, her pass? <laughs> It'd have to be a hardcore smash. I don't know. A hard smash? Like a hard, hard smash. Just a hate smash? Yeah. <laughs> Coulter's going to wipe the floor with her, too, but I'm excited for Ben Shapiro. To, yeah, Ben Shapiro's a beast. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it's definitely going to be like a fucking mopping. He's going to destroy him. We're just looking for, a, yeah, Anna Kasparian. So we were right. Weird spelling. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure when Politicon is. I think it's on the 29th of this month. The 29th? I think so. That's what I heard in some comments. I need uh, We need Trump to do another uh, Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Oh, shit. Uh, the... It, the anniversary of the uh, the last one was the twenty seventh of this month, last year. Trump actually did that before. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. July twenty ninth and July thirtieth. Yeah, you're gonna have oh fuck, Chelsea Handler and Tommy Lauren. Oh, oh wow. That's, uh, why is Chelsea Handler even there? She's yeah, a, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> she's white and blonde. Yeah, yeah. Anna Kasparian and Ann Coulter. You'll have uh, comedians. Uh, okay. Let's see. This, I kind of yeah. hope it's live. I'm hoping you can stream it somewhere. You should be able to, I'm assuming. Yeah, the thing about that is, like, my computer, like, I, what I would want to do is sit here and just stream it as it's happening and comment, but not only am I banned from streaming right now, <laughs> but my computer just can't handle it. You know, I actually have that weekend off work, so I should pro I could probably do that. Dude, you could have an, 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 an epic stream. That'd be cool. <laughs> Uh, gotta, yeah, go see. That's my last weekend alone without kids with Jen, but I'm sure she'll understand, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, she can be on, too. There we go. Yeah. She's a lot of fun. We'll see. We did the, we did the Stormer stream with her the other night, right? Yeah, Daily Stormer reading. <laughs> <laughs> Daily Stormer is always good fun. Coffee, I was going to ask you, what um, video editing software do you use? Uh, Active Presenter. 
which is for it's free, but it's it's basically for making tutorials for like your company. <laughs> but it it works for my for my for my needs uh, because it's free. I, I saw your comment on my channel on my Cyberlink. The, the audio it sucks to get the volume right. Yeah, well, it's it. You can't do any like fancy graphic transitions with it, um, but it it allows you certain freedom in terms of of volume. I was telling you, like, I can increase or decrease my volume by percentage. So. Uh, I just posted in the the chat by the way. Uh, check out HitFilm. I'm uh, considering buying that, but they have a free version that uh, is forever free. And uh, it's film pretty pretty full featured too. I mean, you can buy like add-ons and shit, but the free version's good enough to do basic shit like we all do. Cyberlink's pretty good. I do like Cyberlink. I heard like the uh, Windows, not Windows Media, maybe Windows Media. What's that one? Mo not Movie Maker, but it's like more advanced. True effect. Maybe that's it. I yeah, I have uh, Premiere and After Effects. After Effects more along doing like small like. Uh, special effects scenes, and then Premiere is all putting it together. What does Mark Dice use what, to get like his just his body carved out? Do you guys know? Yeah, I know what it's called, but I, I don't know it off the top of my head. What do you mean? Uh, what what you I know, Rich, like Rich Mark Dice is always standing behind like, in front of a green screen. You just see his body, though, like not actual picture, and like he edits it, so it's basically just his body and. He, on the screen, and I always thought that looked cool. But I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. That's a lot of software does. Uh, XSplit will do that. As I think it is. XSplit. XSplit's pretty good. Um, Premiere does that too. I mean, it's it's pretty. That's, basic that's what feature. it was. Premiere. That's what it was. I think I'm thinking of. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I was setting my green screen up. You can see the poles and shit behind me, but the actual screen isn't big enough. So, I might have to check out this hit film. Check it out, man. Uh, Jen was even learning a tutorial on it, and I, I'm like, man, it's probably shit. And then I start looking into it, you know, because I'm an Adobe guy, right? <laughs> Pay an ass load of money to have my sub for Adobe and Adobe Premiere, right? That's what's called. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I was thinking of earlier. I'm like looking into hit film and I start watching tutorials. I'm like, holy shit, this is actually pretty full featured. Does a lot of the shit uh, you would need After Effects and Premiere to do all in one app. So that's kind of how why it got big, uh, why hit film has its uh, audience it does. But uh, hey, we can talk about video shit all day long off off air. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think we should wrap it up. That works. Cool. All right. Um, so that's episode seven. Uh, if there's any last words from anybody, uh, I don't really have anything. Um, coffee? I'm going to shout out Jakey and Reno. Smoke weed every day. Well, there you go. Uh, Piper? No, I just want to say again, thanks for having me on. It was fun. So, Oh, I was going to say offhand too. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a a uh, collab with coffee coming up here and I was going to ask you as well if you want to do I'll get I'll be in touch with you but I, yeah, I don't know if you've seen my collabs ever where it's like me one-on-one -on -one with somebody and no I haven't, I haven't good seen time. any of your collabs but uh yeah just hit me up all right well that's it then all right well thanks for tuning in everybody I don't actually I don't know if we got anybody tuning in today but you know as Seth tuned in thanks for joining in with us as Seth Cool. Uh, I'll have the link up and, uh, later for download. And um, again, thanks, everybody. Adios. Peace.